guys, it's Presley with MTG Lion, and today we're going to talk about whether or not Magic the Gathering cards in and of itself is a good investment or not. And uh, to do that, to start out, we have to realize it's a very fluctuating kind of game in that sense, um, because some cards could be worth pennies, and other cards could be worth more than $50. So for beginners, that's a very, <clears throat> a very hard aspect to kind of get your footing on, because you never know where it's going to go. Um, like, uh, there's also, like, there's Bane Slayer that in its prime was around $40 and now it's about 10 So, uh, you know, cards have, have a very great ability to do that in this game because of how the game really is itself very complicated and immersive and always, like, ever-expanding. Um, but basically, I guess, to give you some tips on what would be the best way to go about it, um... Like, for the best cards to invest in, you want to do something that would have a high probability, um, which is kind of hard to put your finger on, but those would be things like like new cards. Uh, they're high in demand, they're low in supply, and they're really hyped at the moment. And when you get cards like that, you want to make sure that you don't hold on to them for too long, um, especially not if you have multiple, because really hoarding a lot of cards um, in this kind of game usually isn't going to be a very good idea. You actually might end up with a loss at the end. Um, another one is you want to make sure if you're holding on to hot cards or hot sellers that you are going ahead and like trading them or you know selling them off because you know like I said you don't want to keep it for too long and end up taking a huge loss. Um, another good one are stable cards. Yeah, they're usually always going up in price. Um, it's really only affected if there's like a large reprint, which is really rare in and of itself. Um, let's see. Uh, maybe like dual lands and the legacy stable cards. That's usually a good kind of route to take in the financial decision era when you're talking about Magic the Gathering cards. Um, basically, don't treat it like a stock exchange. You don't want to you don't want to hoard, you don't want to save them, you don't want to wait till later because you'll take a loss normally. Um, just because the game is so unpredictable, you never know what we're going to end up doing next. Um, really, yeah, your best bet would be legacy cards, reserved list, because reserved list, unless there's a large reprint, you know, there's really not, not a reason to be worried there. Um, and if you have to invest, invest in uh, not or non legacy staples. I suggest trading them for the legacy staples or selling them as fast as you can. It's usually the best way to kind of ensure that you're gonna stay on the track. You want to do that before the next rotation. Um, but really, that's that's the basics of what would be um, a good way to go about your investment if that's something that you're looking into. So I hope you guys enjoyed it, and I can't wait to hear some feedback.